One of the most important events from this week is Elon Musk versus Disney, specifically Elon Musk versus the advertisers that left X. Bob Iger is the current CEO of Disney, or I could say former CEO of Disney because recently he just quit his job. Elon Musk sat down with Andrew R. Sorkin at the New York Times. They asked him various questions specifically relating to X and he gave a really important answer. He said, go f yourself to the advertisers that left X because Elon Musk what he envisions is that X should be a free speech platform and that advertisers who are leaving X right now are trying to limit the free speech of the platform. So this is the clip where Elon Musk says go f yourself and then he says hi Bob to Bob Iger. There was advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger today. I hope today. they stop. You hope? Uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f*** yourself. Go f*** yourself. <laughs> is that clear? Hey, Bob. If you're in the audience. Another thing we cannot ignore from this week is the release of the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck was announced originally in November of 2019 at a base price of $40,000. Now, the price has gone up since due to what we can say is inflation and Bidenomics, but in general, the car is now out. And if we compare the Cybertruck to its current rivals like the Rivian R1T, the Ford Lightning, the Hummer EV, and the Silverado EV, it has good weight against them. It's clearly going to make a dent in the market, and Tesla is going to come victorious again, as it usually does in the electric space. The Cybertruck was designed by the Tesla designer Franz Volschhausen, and he's made some of the most iconic Tesla vehicles that we see on our roads today. The Cybertruck definitely had a different creative direction in mind. It's definitely going to be different, it's going to stand out, but it seems as if it's going to be a competitive vehicle. There's a long waiting list, and those who originally signed up back in 2019 are going to be able to get their cars shortly. The next thing I want to talk about is the Gaza ceasefire. There was a Gaza ceasefire signed earlier this week between Israel and Hamas, and that was so Israel can trade away political prisoners and Hamas is going to give away those who they captured and terrorized after the October 7th events. And let's talk about this, okay? The ceasefire recently just ended after Hamas randomly started blowing up targets. I don't support Hamas. I think Hamas is genuinely a terrorist organization. Although Israel is trying to protect its people, I also don't think the most fondly of them. I also don't support many of the people who run Palestine, considering those people voted in Hamas to rule the area. In general, I have a lot of opinions on this conflict. Those opinions really don't matter to me because it, it's, not, it's not my conflict. I don't care about this war enough. I, I feel like every side in this conflict is bad and mostly Hamas is the worst. Palestine deserves independence. Israel deserves independence. We should just do a two-state solution, peaceful negotiation, and end the conflict. Hamas is firing missiles. Israel is going to retaliate, and they're going to react. And so what's going to happen next is a continuation of the war. Gideon a couple months ago said he's going to leave YouTube and focus on his faith as a loyal Christian. Gideon was formerly a trolling YouTuber and a prankster, so he'd go around and mess with people in public. Then he recorded and posted on his channel. He recently made a video saying that he's he's sorry and that he believes those pranks he made were mischievous. He said that the pranks he made were an act of Satanism. And so he deleted all those prank videos and now the only video that's left is him saying that he's quitting forever and that he wants his followers to follow the word of Christ. Of course, we're all going to have our opinions on this. The Bible is something we can interpret. Some people might not even believe in the Bible. It doesn't matter, but Gideon made his own call and all we can do is really just respect his decision and move on. Javier Milei won the Argentinian election. He is now the new president of Argentina and he's going to be sworn into office soon. So who's Javier Milei and what are his beliefs? He claims to be an anarcho capitalist libertarian. He's going to fix the Argentinian economy, get rid of the centralized bank, he's going to get rid of services that he believes are draining the economy of Argentina, and he's going to try and fix the situation of social politics and general behavior of the citizens for a better country. Gavin Newsom versus Ron DeSantis, the two of them recently held a debate where they talked about their beliefs and who's just the, the better uh, fucking state governor. Where they basically said, you know, they debated who's the better governor and who would be the best lead for a future president. Ron DeSantis is up in the polls, but he's never going to beat Trump. And Gavin Newsom can't run unless Biden either dies or decides he's not going to run. These two had a debate, but it feels useless to me because both of them will never truly run. The next election, 2024, is going to be Trump versus Biden again. And so this is pretty useless, but it was interesting to see. 
Ron DeSantis brought up some good points. Gavin Newsom brought up some shit points. And Gavin Newsom talked about the fact that there's some book bannings and that Ron DeSantis is disrupting people's freedom. And Ron DeSantis responded by saying the books he blocked were only blocked in children's centers and education places like schools because he believed that those books are sexual and that they shouldn't be shown to kids. Some of the books you're talking about, one is called, the governor just brought it up, it's called Gender Queer, a memoir. Explicit pornographic book showing sex acts. Another, Flamer, graphic book about young boys performing sex acts at summer camp. Uh, this book is gay, a book containing instructions on the ins and outs of gay sexuality. Let me finish. Uh, let's talk about it, a book that contains graphic descriptions about how to masturbate for males and females. My question to you, Governor Newsom, those books, do you believe that's appropriate for school districts to teach kids, yes or no? Not, come on, those are not, it's not part of the curriculum. They're not Excuse teaching me, those kids are the, that. That's that was, not those it. are books that were in well, school. Hold on, hold on. The bottom line is you are on a book banning binge, your state. Are you more pro freedom or are you, are you pro not socializing your kids? And I think it's easy to pick a side in this argument. If you don't want to groom your kids, then don't let them read books that are sexualized. And that's why Ron DeSantis basically swept the debate because Gavin Newsom made really poor choices in both his wording and what he what, what his ideals were, what he stood for. Ron DeSantis also showed a picture of human feces or shit that's on the floors of San Francisco. And he mentioned the fact that they got rid of all the shit when the president of China, Xi Jinping, came to visit. So I think that's a good representation of San Francisco. Of San Francisco. <laughs> There's a lot of plots on that. You may be asking, what is that plotting? Well, this is an app where they plot the human feces that are found on the streets of San Francisco. And you see how almost the whole thing is covered because that is what has happened in one of the previous greatest cities this country's ever had. Human feces is now a, a fact of life, except when a communist dictator comes to town. Then they cleaned up the streets. They lined the streets with Chinese flags. They didn't put American flags there. They cleaned everything up. So they're willing to do it for a communist dictator, but they're not willing to do it for their own people. Just, I want to get in with the So I think that shows good character from him, you know? It shows how all these decisions, all these poor doings in San Francisco are basically his fault. He was the former person who led that place. Gavin Newsom was the former mayor of San Francisco, and so these attacks from DeSantis were very personal. And they were justified. I think the debate was interesting, but in the end, it was also useless. On the national level, the rate was 380.7 offenses per 100,000 people. In California, meanwhile, the rate was much higher, 499.5 offenses per 100,000. In Florida, lower, 258.9 offenses per 100,000. Governor Newsom, let me start with you. Your numbers are way higher than the national average how do you explain that when safety and security, I would argue, is a prerequisite for the pursuit of happiness? Well, I couldn't agree with you more. We're near 50-year lows, down 55 percent violent crimes in the state of California from the 1990s. And I want to compare and contrast that with the issue in Florida that you didn't mention, and that's the murder rate. And let's broaden it more broadly. The issue is seven out of the top Those numbers 10, were part of the murder rate. Seven of the top 10 murder rates in the United States of America are red states. He has a 66 percent higher gun death rate than the state of California is a higher murder rate. Go to places like Jacksonville, go to places like Orlando, go to places like Tampa. The murder rates off the charts compared, compared to cities like San Francisco. So this, is, this is the slick politician. You put up the rates. He has 500 per 100,000. Florida is 250. So that's almost twice as much. And he's trying to spin that to say California's doing good. People are leaving California in droves, largely because public safety has collapsed. They have chosen in California to put the interests of the criminals over public safety. Uh, they treat, uh, they're easier on sex offenders. They're easier on all these crimes that are leading to a collapse in the quality of life. What? What? Let me also say, I, I, what are you talking about you're just when it comes to this? I know no, you're, you're like just to jabber. jabber. By the way, those I are all like easily to, I know you like to, to lie. Anytime. If you enjoyed this episode of Catch Up 10 or 10 Minutes with Catch Up, I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. Subscribe, like, and I'll see you guys next time for the next episode of this news show. I'm going to try and do it frequently. 10 minutes of news that you need to know quick. Bye bye. <laughs>